first week we were like dead last, but now we're like slowly making that trek back up. And CLG is in like the top three right now, so we're looking to take their spot uh, as we progress into the season. Welcome back to week five of the NALCS Summer Splits, and it's time for our first match of the day Curse versus Council Logi Gaming. Both of these teams are coming into this match after each losing a game yesterday. Yesterday, Curse got destroyed by Team Coast. Their double AP comp lost control of their own blue buff early, which left both of their mages mana starved, so they couldn't push or roam. And while Curse struggled from the moment they spawned, CLG kept it much closer against the league's number one team. Yeah, Double Lift and Choster did a good job up top in the dual lane, grabbing the first blood. But as soon as that Cloud9 Ash Zyra combo hit level six, there was too much crowd control for CLG to remain in control. So both of these teams have two chances to redeem themselves today, and this is the first. Coming into this game, these two squads have only faced each other once this summer, and it ended with CLG getting the win. Yeah, it was CLG being able to take it to the late game and winning a very close 51-minute game. Nian came up big in that game as Jace, even though it was still his first week in his new top lane role. And even though Curse lost, Voiboy also put up strong performance. Uh, he went 6-3-10 and 10 as Rise. So coming into this game, Voiboy continues to be one of the best top laners in the NALCS. And while Nian has a lot of respect for Voiboy, he cannot wait to take him on today. I really enjoy playing against Voiboy. I like playing against the really good players because I learn a lot from it and I just want to improve. So looking forward to playing against Voiboy in the top lane, hopefully get a 1v1 him instead of a 2v1. Much more exciting. So looking forward to playing against Voiboy. Nian really wants to play against <laughs> He Boy said Boy. it like three times. I want to take on Voiboy. Uh, he really wants it one for one. We'll see if he actually gets his wishes. Now let's take a look at today's lineups. On the blue team, we have Curse up in that top lane, as everyone's well aware. It is Voiboy in the jungle, St. Vicious. In the mid lane, Nijaki on AD carry uh, cop. And my homeboy from Europe, Edward, in support. And on the red side, it's Counter Logic Gaming. Nian is up top. Big fat LP in the jungle. Link at mid. Double lift on AD carry and Chowster support. It does look like cops trying to take off their own camera for a second. <laughs> so before we jump into Champ Select, let's take a look at who you think is going to win this game. According to lolesports.com, 61% of you think that CLG is going to come away victorious. And considering their record and how they're playing, I think that's a figure. Yeah, they're definitely the favorites going into this one. Not only are they higher up in the standings, but the games that CLG are losing look really close. They, they are not getting blown out by anybody. Not getting destroyed like Curse was yesterday, oh. for example. <laughs> Talking about the, the standings at the moment, if Curse really wants to make a run of those playoffs, it's mm -hmm. teams like like CLG that's in the middle of the block that they have to take these wins off of. Yeah, the ones at the middle are the ones they're going to want to bring back down to their level. But we're going to Champion Select and see if they can actually make it happen uh, in this stage of the game. Because Champion Select is becoming pretty much uh, you know, one of the most important parts of the game. Yeah, and it's not only just for these teams. We're talking about Vulcan and Cloud9 and how Cloud9 said they struggle against Vulcan. In this particular matchup, Tristana once again banned out against Double Lift. This is something that's becoming somewhat of a trend. They don't want Double Lift on that carry. Yeah, it's interesting because this is one of the ADs that Double Lift picked up later. Uh, you know, he was very uh, vein dependent and, uh, and he would go to that Caitlyn next, but Having picked up Tristana as well as Draven more recently, people started banning, uh, banning those out against him as well. The rest of the bands, maybe some standards, some a little less. Vladimir, Nunu, Karthus, and Twisted Fate. Vladimir is the one that's thrown me for a little bit. We know Voidboy has played in the past, but were you expecting that as a band? They, since Curse have been really favoring those double AP comps, I think that is uh, CLG doing their research. They have been known to have, you know, Big Fat LP do some of the best pre-game research um, and come out with those very specific bands. So I think that was aimed at taking out one of the the team comps that Curse usually run, and so they uh, they changed it over and went with that Jace. So Elise was the final ban, another champion we're not going to see in this matchup. Curse insta locking in that Jace, securing that one away. Now, CLG are hovering over Corky and Maokai. It'd be a little non-traditional, and I'm not getting too excited yet, but there's a lot of thought going on. So there's a couple things for CLG. Uh, well, they're not going to even use it. Okay. But anyways, if they did, had picked Corky, uh, Nian used to even play Corky middle, so there was a lot of switch-ups that they could do. Interesting hover over, but they go back to just very standard CLG stuff. They're not bringing out anything that they haven't used before. And it looks like Chaucer has gotten over his nerves on Thresh. Returning to the support role a little bit later, it took him a while to learn that Thresh uh, and to be confident to use him in the LCS, but it looks like they have uh, passed that threshold. 
Yeah, his thresh yesterday was a little bit better than what we have seen in, in past weeks. Uh, Nyantanso on Shen as well. So picking up some of the champions that they have played already this weekend. And it hasn't revealed anything. It's safe picks, it's secure picks, and it basically signals maybe they want to play slower in the laning phase at this time. Well, in the interview we just saw, uh, St. Vicious says, yes, we're going to be looking to pick off CLG because they always split push. One of the best champions to split push with is that Shen, so it's definitely a CLG pick here. Meanwhile, the Lee Sin is a, a bit of a rarity for Team Curse to have in the jungle because St. Vicious uh, not exactly known for his mechanical ability coming from that jungle. Uh, it's more a boy boy champion here and he really made big, big waves using that Lee Sin top lane. Uh, and trying to bully his lane around. So there's the possibility we may still see a jungle being locked in a little later on. Uh, we've seen that there was a Zyra being hovered over for a moment or two for Curse. We've seen support Zyras yesterday. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, Edward just locks in Sona, a safe pick. And on the other side, Pantheon has been secured. That's interesting that they locked in so quickly because I thought that was going to be another mouse over. But this is a very, very aggressive AD champion. Uh, he can put out so much damage very early in the game. You want to keep your eyes on what lane he goes to first because that's where CRG are going to be focusing most, most of their efforts for the early kill. Now, with the Pantheon in there, the fact that he's going to be able to do that grand skyfall and maybe help counter some of those split pushing, control the map a little more, you've got a global and a quasi-global in the form of Pantheon as well. So help control the map. On the other side for Curse, they're starting to round up the composition, thinking of going for that Draven for Cop. Yeah, Cop's been using Draven a lot more recently since Edward joined the team. He's he's wanted to mold Cop into a more aggressive AD carry to fit his support style a lot more closely. And Draven is one of the perfect champions to do that on. Meanwhile, MF is the exact opposite where Cop used to be known for being very far back. And it does end up being <laughs> switched back to the Draven. So they're thinking of going for that wombo combo, the Maelstrom, the bullet time, but they decide against it. We've seen now the full you know roster here for Curse, and it's going to be St. Vicious in the jungle. Mm -hmm. He's holding onto it right now. They still have a little bit of time to switch if they want to pull tricks, but it's probably going to be him because anybody else going into the jungle would have a, a little difficult time starting out there. So we will get to see the uh, St. Vicious Lee Sin coming from the jungle. The main points here from that Curse squad, though, is the the switch over from that Zyra support that you're talking about to the Sona opens up so many more offensive combos. Zyra's great at her counter initiation, but Sona with the offensive flash crescendos to start things off will allow Boy Boy to get a good slicing Maelstrom off on the rest of CLG if they can ever get them to group up for team fights. But meanwhile, CLG's got those two globals we talked about already. Zed is also particularly good at split pushing as well. We we always see Zed in those mm -hmm. solo lanes. I remember uh, seeing Reginald playing about two or three weeks back, two or three weeks back, and he was just destroying people's faces. So it's an interesting composition. They were swapping around a little bit. It is going to be Pantheon in the jungle as the last second swap. I want to know specifically about this. This is a champion okay. we don't see in the jungle often. So he's an amazing ganker. He comes out as soon as he has the he has a jump and a stun in his W ability. So he has a gap closer that he will be able to use. And it really works well in this 3.8 jungle, actually, since the jungler gets help on his first buff. And then after the second buff, he's level 3 already and looks for the gank. We'll probably be seeing Big Fat LP go for that. And this is a really nice champion for Big Fat LP because he's said that he just wants to be yep. the most annoying jungler in the entire game. And that's going to come from repeated Pantheon ganks very early on. We'll have to keep a close eye on him because if he doesn't make those ganks stick and he's losing the farm, as we see from Big Fat LP all the time, it may make his mid to late game a little bit more difficult. Pantheon has a hard time catching up because his clear speed is a lot slower than most other champions. Champion. So he is very much focused on getting those successful ganks. So we are in game right now. Curse are on the blue side, starting to move towards their red buff. Whereas on the other side, Counter Logic Gaming wearing the red trunks for this matchup. They've stacked up as five and they've definitely signaled an intent to invade, but they're going to step right on top of a ward. So Curse are going to be fully aware of their positioning as we do have a very brief pause coming in. And we have already had Big Fat LP start out with his Q Spear. Um, so it's not going to be the, the threat of that CC stacking of Death Sentence plus a Pantheon jump for the first blood. Uh, he's not going to put himself in the, in the, behind in the jungle at all for this level one. Now talk, about, uh, talk to me a little bit about St. Vicious' Lee Sin. It's something that we haven't seen him on really often at all. And, you know, both of these junglers, they're, they're very early game heavy and, and mm -hmm. you know, quite good at these low-level ganks. What are we expecting from Saint and Lee? 
St. Vicious is probably going to look to snowball Voiboy because that's where they like to focus a lot of their efforts. Um, and it's very interesting because we haven't we have seen so many Lee Sins start with Doran's blades just straight up um, with this new trend of skipping that Hunter's machete, whereas Saint is still going with the old build, those five potions and the machete, which means that he can stay out in the jungler a lot longer than anyone who had started a Doran's Blade. So he's looking to uh, make his moves early and then continue to sustain through the first, you know, four minutes or so of this game. So we'll have to keep our eyes on that one. We do just have to have a quick client reboot. One of the guys over on Curse, it was Cops Machine, but we should hopefully have him back in the game very, very soon. And it does look like it has already been resolved. So, well played tech, guys. <laughs> yeah. CLG, very aggressive Fastest on this Fastest reboot ever. <laughs> it looks like they're going to continue the invade. Uh, like you said, they were already seen out. So pretty much all they can gain from this in invade at this point is getting the vision that they want down. And at this point, it's about putting your wards in unorthodox positions so that Curse cannot just come by with pink wards and clear those out. So we, just, we did see this all day yesterday. A lot of these low-level multi-man invades just to get vision down, just to try to get more information. And I suppose when you're facing off against a Lee and a Pantheon with very strong early games, you'd want to have some of that additional vision. Yeah, and there's two parts about the 3.8 patch that made, that encouraged invades. One was, of course, moving so much more experience over to the buffs and putting uh, a lot more emphasis on those buffs. But the other one was, you know, delaying the, t the spawn time of the smaller camps so that your solo lanes are not going to miss anything out, or even your dual lanes aren't going to miss out on experience by not starting one of the small camps, too. Yeah, it's basically a complete rework this level one aggression and level one planning. What we do see, the minimap is littered with wards right now. Curse have expended a lot, and it does look like they're about to find St. Vicious in Cop right now. Link and Nien slowly moving in. They are stood on top of ward as well. That's three versus two, and they're actually going to be bullied away. Yeah, pretty easy there because no jungler was coming from CLG to contest. There was no smite steal threat uh, that St. Vicious had to worry about, so he was able to get that one up. Uh, the only difference here is that Saint used his smite on the blue buff, whereas Big Fat LP still has his smite available because he got plenty of help on that blue buff. So we'll see how, how quickly he can pick up his own red and maybe try roam around to set up some of these early ganks. We do see that CLG have put themselves in a lane swap position. They put their dual lane up top and they voluntarily put Niantonso Shen against Draven and Sona in that bottom lane. Yeah, it's uh, interesting because Niantanso kept on talking about wanting to play versus Void <laughs> Boy so much, but this definitely uh, does make sense here to have that Shen uh, trying to defend against the Draven because Draven's range is not, you know, as long as the Caitlyn, and Shen does have the threat of taunting him under a turret when he does go for that damage, so it's a little bit more dangerous than the average uh, 2 versus one you see in the middle lane just trading back and forth as Nijak is getting some good damage down onto Link. He's going to be able to heal that up relatively soon. And the danger that we're talking about is coming right now. Big Fat LP got his two buffs, he's got his level three, and he's coming to that Shen lane for the taunt setup. So we'll see just if they if they can chain that CC, which is two very hard CCs, the taunt and the stun. It will, of course, lock up a very squishy Sona who's been famed for having less HP than Caster Minions not too <laughs> long ago. But at the moment, it does look like he's just fending off their pressure, maybe defending the tower. Yeah, and bo both of those people bottom have to be worried because not only is Sona squishy, but Draven is very position dependent. If he goes to pick up an axe, uh, Big Fat LP will see exactly where he's going to because there's a giant shining light on the ground and it can set them up for a very dangerous counter situation, which is why they're just going all the way back here and taking the double golems. So we'll have to keep an eye on the Curse's jungle, St. Vicious. He's up in the top lane as well, helping defend, helping keep some of the pressure off that tower. And the reason I highlight that in particular is yesterday's early game where St. Vicious decided to stick in lane and force like a, a 2v2, 2v3 situation. It didn't really work out for them. Yeah, and it would be good for Curse if they could force Big Fat LP to stay in a lane and, and do a similar thing, but he's actually gone back to the jungle. So all the lanes, need to be wary of this Pantheon coming out of the jungle because with a flash and stun combo, he can easily turn a gank into someone's death. And the ward coverage for Curse right now is very sparse. They only have that one in the bottom side, which actually did 
pay off right there and see Big Bad LP. So it works out for them. The one ward they <laughs> do have, the one ward to rule them all. As that's it efficiency were. right that's, there for that's you. That's it. We do see St. Vicious. He's moved himself towards this mid lane. 13 CS on the board. Hammer gets dropped down into Link, and he's just going to use that Living Shadow to Ooh. get away so safely. Takes a little bit of poke, but not too much. Can they set up a counter gank here? Big Bad LP wants Saint. So Saint is in trade. Damage back and forth. That's uh, Aegis of... Zonia from Pantheon is going to block some of that damage, gets that shield down, and works in his favor. Yeah, whenever you get that passive up, uh, the Aegis of Protection from Pantheon, you can see he's still at 100% life because it fully blocks an auto attack. And Lee Sin definitely came out on the worst for that trade. I definitely want to keep my eyes on Big Fatty's, Big Fat LP's mechanical use of Pantheon. Because of the power that it actually offers for tower diving as well. If you combo correctly, the mm -hmm. passive into your W and you refresh your passive, that's two turret hits you could block. And that is a lot of damage. It's it's not like having a passive a court like Zack or something where you can reset everything. But two first tower hits are huge, especially if it's a 3v three versus one dive. Uh, it looks like that's not going to be happening here for CLG as they just scare him off the turret, though. Yeah, and take a look at that. I mean, after they gank in the mid lane, Link decides to just waltz himself through the Curse jungle and secures the first tower of the game completely uncontested from Curse. So the reason that CLG did that, where they had Link rotate, is because Big Fat LP was out of mana. So Link basically took over the roaming duties that the jungler usually has, and Link went to go gank, while Big Fat LP just got a couple free last hits in this mid lane. Well, that's fantastic communication on the side of CLG, just rotating the champions and the positions to make sure that they don't lose pressure or farm, but they gain the global objective and global advantage. And you can immediately see that Chouster and Doublelift are now moving to this bottom lane to help defend their tower. Exactly. It's been great management of resources here from CLG. They've timed this perfectly so that they actually Actually, uh, Nian is a, a few minions off of that level six. As soon as he gets in range at that top lane, two more minions will give him the possibility of staying united. And since CLG just rotated AD carry and support down bottom, they could take an early dragon. We actually seen them poising their in and around the river. They put some vision down. And I, I think they both, or, or the team Ooh. pretty much said, we need that stand united. We also seen St. Vicious, you know, tagging the dragon and pulling it out of its pit. But at the same time, we have Link rotating up top here, and he is actually waiting around to ambush Voiboy over here. So we'll see how this one pans out. <laughs> it's a bit of a, a bit of a timid start, and literally nothing happens. Yeah. <laughs> Both ninjas better at dodging than they are at landing their skill shots right there, <laughs> and they both uh, avoid any sort of harassment. Interesting point, actually. There are four ninjas in this game right now, two apiece for both sides. So. Uh, interesting fact for anybody keeping track. Right now, Big Fat LP, he started off the Dragon. They've pink watered it up, so CLG knows they've got vision control. And the Stand United has become available, like we said. Uh, Nian up top did get the minions needed, so he could join this fight. And this means that CLG will probably get an uncontested Dragon unless Saint can pull out some Miracle Steel. So Saint's going to come up. Oh, oh, it missed! It was a little close. It was so close there. So close. I think the Dragon had just been pulled a little bit out. and. That max range sonic wave just not managing to land. That is a very good point for uh, people who are not used to the jungle. Always nice to leash the dragon, uh, draw him a little bit out of the pit so that your opponents cannot send over skill shots like that from the back and steal it away from you. Yeah, and it's something that we actually see Aranea from Alternate doing so often with his Lee Sin play. I think he's stolen more dragons and buffs <laughs> in the EU split than any other jungler. It's been a very slow start to this game. 10 minutes on the clock and only that 1,000 gold thanks to the tower in CLG's favor. Also, with the dragon adding on top of uh, the turret global gold, CLG are looking pretty good here. This is going according to their plans. The only thing they haven't been able to take advantage of was the Pantheon jungle early game pressure. And it's actually interesting that he's now hit level 6 as, as well. So the possibility of two uh, global jumps here coming from CLG. They can easily turn something in this bottom lane, and Cop and Edward have to be a little bit wary right now. now that's just something that's a little bit different that we've seen from Big Fat LP. He's, he spent most of his time in the jungle, and it's, you know, one of the things that's really interesting to see him play is his aggressive, his gank-heavy play style, but he's not doing it this time, as now he jumps in the mid lane. So he misses the first. Oh, actually, they're diving the turret! So there they go. Nijak is in trouble. Ignite is down. First blood's picked up. 
And they managed to land that one. Uh, Grand Skyfall just straight into Nijaki's face. Yeah, exactly. He only got to use uh, one of the, the ticks right there. St. Vicious does want to answer, and Big Fat OB with the smallest sidestep to dodge that Q. So St. Vicious carries on chasing. He uses the flash forward. Dragon's Rage kicks backwards. He stuns up St. Vicious. The stand United gets channeled. There comes the shadow from Link. Oh. He puts himself in safety. Ignite is ticking away. Link will go down as Void Boy drops as well. That was a one-for-one -one trade. Niantonsa decides to back away from that one. Beautiful job by Void Boy focusing the opponent that was not getting Stan United, and he was able to pick up a kill for himself, but Nian did answer. That is a large cooldown that's uh, not going to be available for CLG now, so the one-for-one -one trade actually going in favor of Curse. So in terms of the, the play as well, St. Vicious flashing forward, then using that safeguard to a minion. So quite interesting start. Nijaki is doing the best that he can in this particular setup. Going to rejoin this mid lane, zero one up. He does have a fair CS advantage over Zed right now. Jackie is pretty much dominating Link right now as far as CS is concerned, but we've seen Link roam a lot, and that's one of the reasons why. He's been uh, going up to that top lane, and they haven't really gotten anything for it, so all of that wasted time for him meant Jackie free farming in mid. So Jackie's got his uh, Brutalizer completed, starting to stack up that tier of the Goddess. Uh, the CS advantage is balanced out for CLG in the top lane, in terms of well, the fact that he was able to swap earlier, and I guess because Void Boy is roaming, you see Niantanto with a, a CS advantage in his favor. And Niantanto is going tank Shen. This is not going to be um, the two solo lane threats plus double lift that we usually see from CLG. It's big fat LP going to be the third threat here. Coming from that jungle, he actually is building Pantheon for damage. And there comes the Skyfall, stuns up Nijaki, Deathmark goes down. Nijaki's got 400 HP, will the pop be enough? Yes, it is, like a balloon. Ooh. He goes down, St. Vicious chases from the side. Another Sonic Wave does not manage to connect. St. Vicious carries on chasing, one second on the clock. Can he land the next one? The stun goes in, St. Vicious is locked in place. The Sonic Wave misses again. Stun goes down from Boy Boy, and St. Vicious says, you ain't going nowhere, son. No, Kicks him in the I didn't gonna save him this time, yeah. And he does go down, so that's another 1v1 trade that is made by Big Fat LP jumping in with that Pantheon. And this is the combo that they wanted. They wanted the burst from Link uh, using his full combo, Deathmark, to get that double damage, and then just the extra added CC from Big Fat to finish off Jackie. And there's not much that Jackie can actually do to answer that. So it is always up to St. Vicious to answer every single one of those jumps, and he's been doing his job. It's interesting to see how Big Fat LP is actually uh landing them. There's no real trick to it. Just throw it down on mid and land on somebody's head, but it's working. So the best strategy actually um, with that ultimate from Pantheon is to just cast your Grand Skyfall directly on your opponent because once that ring appears, they will immediately run for the closest edge of it and then they have the least chance of getting out if you just cast it right on top of their heads. So 13 minutes on the clock, three kills to two. CLG have 1,800 gold. Blue buff is being donated over to Link, so he's gonna get all that cooldown reduction in his favor. St. Vicious has snuck himself up into this bottom bush. He doesn't have his ultimate available, but it will be very, very soon. And there is a ward in the second bush, so he really is confined to this second half of the bottom lane here. And you can see he, he gives up, he's not patient enough, and he's going to recall here. No more action down bottom, unless Big Fat LP decides to use his next Grand Skyfall to take advantage of Draven. We'll see which lane he does decide to jump on. Grand Sky for a little over two minutes as far as cooldowns are concerned, and it's just become available. His flash will be up soon. His Link, he's sniffing around in the jungle. Now, if CLG are going to plan this out correctly, they would send all of their members bottom because Dragon's coming up in 20 seconds. So they want to try a gank bottom. Whether it's successful or not, they can force someone back. Psychic, Kobe is psychic. They jump onto uh, Cop down in the bottom lane. Edward throws out the crescendo. He's not going to do anything but slow the pace down. Flay pulls him backwards as the pressure is on. Caitlyn secures the first kill of the game. Now, now they turn around onto Pantheon. He is dropped by Draven. This is everybody jumping involved. St. Fisher's Sonic Wave goes wide as they jump over the attack. And three kills down for Curse. CLG in a great position. So that is textbook play when you have a top lane with a global, either teleport or stand united, something like that, 
you and the dragon is up, you always want to send your whole team down to that bottom lane because you know you'll have the advantage. Even if the tower dive wasn't perfectly executed right there, CLG still come out with a huge advantage because of the extra man that they have. And now they can even go clean up dragon after this. Three kills, two towers, and position on dragon. It's a very good place to be. We do see Nian is recalling, and he's going to try to defend this top tower from Voiboy. And Big Fat LP also recalled, so they don't have smite at this dragon. It's a little bit more dangerous because they've used that extra time to push on the secondary turret here. Got to be very careful. Link drop low to 110. Nijaki, those accelerated shock blasts, is really keeping them on the back foot. And it's it's very risky to, to go for those objectives against a Jace who can just poke you down from range. So they. CLG tried to get a little too much off of that dive bottom. Going for the second turret and the dragon, they had two people recall, was just too much. And Curse are actually able to regain control. So well played by Curse to at least get themselves their first map objective of the game. Ooh. Boy Boys gets taunted up in the top lane. Nian's going to carry on putting pressure, but Boy Boys just going to be able to surge himself away to safety. So they Nothing too risky there. Yeah, there's no turret up there, so he's going to have to walk all the way back here. And that gives Nian time to farm yet another wave uncontested. He's getting very strong on that Shen, which is exactly what CLG want. Their split pusher to be in the position to solo any member from CLG. The question I is... Mean, Curse. From Curse. The question <laughs> from Curse is whether or not they can catch anybody out. They talked about it explicitly in the build-up for this matchup, saying we know CLG plays the map and we need to catch them. And they've got a pretty good comp for doing that. Lee Sin, Jace, pretty good at the duels. Ken and can offer dueling as well as teamfight power. Exactly. They do have a, a good amount of speed buffs with both Jace and Sona. But it's very hard to lock down either member of CLG that is split pushing because both of them have dashes and they've got deep wards. Now it's Boy Boy in trouble. He always this lightning rush already. He gets taunted up. They wait for that to just come off. Then the stun goes down. Lightning rush is up. He manages to pop the Zonya's hourglass. Flash ignites his ticking. It's worn off actually. He gets away with his life. Zonya's plus flash is the only thing that was going to get him out of that one. Well played by Boy Boy to escape, but they lose pressure on the map. So now we see the middle lane, that is going to drop. This is the fourth tower of the game for CLG. They have a numbers advantage in the top lane. As Link has been caught out, he got dropped in a second. That ninja was looking for an assassination too deep in enemy territory right there. Curse catching him out, a great collapse. That's exactly what Curses need to get back in this game. So they do have they were a couple of kills behind. The kill did land in Draven's hands as well, which will at least help them out if they can get into some of these team fights, giving some of the kills to your AD carry, but you really feel that Nijaki needs to get on the board. He needs his poke and his damage with that Jace to be more impactful. They need, they do need multiple threats here because while Cop is, has a decent amount of farm and he's got that Bloodthirster, the answer on the other side is double lift rushing that infinity edge. So Caitlyn's going to be having those high impact crits coming from the back line. And they'll need the shock blast from Jackie. St. Fishers goes in. The Sonic Wave doesn't kick, but he manages to knock back Chalster. The pressure is on. There goes up the Whirling Death, and it secures death onto Chalster. They trade one for one. That is the jungler for the support. Now in the background, Big Fat LP is trying the best he can to get on Cop. And Cop is doing so well at that retreat damage. In the bottom lane, Nijaki picks up the tower. That was very good, Kai by Cup. When you are Draven, as you're running away, you always want to be throwing out those axes. Now it's a one versus one. There goes Link. The death mark is on Jace. Damage is traded back and forth. Ignites are both on. Where does the pop come from? 250 HP as the ignite wears off. They're trading auto attack damage. Link is waiting for his cooldowns. He wants to go in, but not able to pick up the kill. Ooh, very, very interesting one versus one right there. Didn't go right back to the shadow and ran out of cooldown. So now they have to back off and at range, Jace is the one with the advantage here, so he's going to be firing the Shock Blast, and it is Link that's going to have to calm down a little bit. So we do see up in the top lane, Nian, he has still continued farming. He's got some wards on that blue buff. He's about to spot out Boy Boy, and he's got a two-level advantage over his lane opponents. And he's calling over the rest of Curse right now, so they're going to try and contest this blue pickup. So they have managed to at least try to get some numbers, but CLG have arrived. They've walked themselves over a Curse ward, so Curse is going to be well aware that the invading army is there. Lantern is down. That's going to give away Chalster's position. Vision has been denied. And Curse, they may be able to pick this one up securely. They've actually got five members in the area, so too dangerous for CLG to go inside and contest that one. It's unfortunate that they have Thresh as their hook support instead of Blitzcrank, because Blitzcrank can actually pull that blue buff over the wall, and you can take it from the other side. 
Sorry, this Whereas Thresh just stuns it. Yeah, he just stuns it. As if, you know, that's that's not enough, Kobe. That's not enough. Right now, Chalster, he's moved himself towards this bottom lane. Pink watered up the red buff. They've got some good vision on this bottom half of the map. And they're basically just looking for picks right now as far as CLG are concerned. Yeah. Uh, well, Curse are definitely looking for picks, and CLG are looking to split push with not only their uh, Shen, but also CLG Link. He's got mobility boots on that Zed, so he's going to try and make use of that wave clear and get to the to the middle of the map as soon as possible. Now Jackie under attack again. There goes the death mock. Grand Skyfall comes in. Jackie's going to get popped from that damage. Pantheon comes in, stuns him in place, throws a spear and secures the kill. That's the danger when you're going up against the global composition is being caught out yourself when you're looking for picks and you're trying to pick off someone of CLG. They actually have two members that could join the fight very easily. While all that was going on, we see cooldowns have been blown in the top lane. Ignite for both Kanan and Shen as well as that slicing Maelstrom. So Boy Boy and Nien, they were going out it. They were going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but nobody going down in that exchange. Double have taken an axe to the face right there. Does bleed a little bit more than he would like and has to back off. Only double lift can survive an axe to the face. Right now, 32,000 gold. CLG still hold a slowly earned lead, although it is 20 minutes on the clock. It's still fairly early in the game. Three tower advantage, 5,000 gold, four kills. This is basically just CLG setting the tempo of the game. Yeah, this is classic CLG, and this is not anything new for Curse. They were aware of what CLG was going to do. Yes, they're going to split push all day, but they haven't had an answer for it. They they were going to look for picks. He talked about it in the interview. They just haven't been able to make any of those successful ganks work out. CLG have always been one step ahead here, and Big Fat LP has done a really good job with those Grand Skyfalls, keeping up uh, the pressure on the map. So let's have a look at his items right now. Playing Pantheon in the jungle. Last time I can remember Pantheon jungle was Herkubot during the uh, 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 the end of the spring split. He's picked up his Brutalizer, a couple of cloth, uh, cloth armors as well as that Spirit of the Ancient Golem. Was it something Ooh. you would expect from a Pantheon jungle? Well, look at this link here. He might go for the assassination on the oracles. But he thinks twice about it, doesn't want to go all in and sacrifice his life. Anyway, yes, the <laughs> the Pantheon build here from Big Fat LP is the little bit of early damage from Brutalizer, but he's not going crazy. This is the same Big Fat LP that everyone knows and loves. He's going to go tanky after this. That's what he usually builds on his junglers. Meanwhile, the split push from CLG that everyone knew was going to come is taking effect right now. Yeah, take a look. Zed in the bottom lane, Shane in the top lane. Just a matter of CLG using that superior vision to their advantage. They've just lost some wards on that bottom half of the map, so wouldn't be surprised to see Link starting to back off now. So the plan here for Curse is to get together and use the Jace Acceleration Gate to go after the grouped up members of CLG. Whatever CLG send their three members to, that's where Curse should go try and force their fight. They need to make something happen here because if they keep letting CLG go to any lane that they want, then they're just going to continue falling behind in gold. So at this moment in time, Curse, they're starting to group up towards this top lane, so maybe this is the fight they want. But the problem is, Nijaki's Jace is all the way down on that bottom inhibitor. We do see them going in on Chowster, though. Dragon's Range is followed up. St. Vicious is diving after the support while he's left his carry and support alone. Double lift is in the background as the Whirling Death rattles across, dealing damage. Nien is fending off three members as he decides to flash over the wall as Draven joins the party. Down in the bottom lane, they've managed to trade one for one, but that's a trade that Nijak is actually not bad. One versus two, picking up a kill. And it gives some extra damage here from Big Fat LP onto the turret. He has to be careful though, because Curse are recalling right now, and Voiboy still has a slicing Maelstrom up. He didn't use it in that last skirmish. So right now, Big Fat LP is going to back away, does not manage to get the tower, but crucially, his ultimate is still available. So that trade, that two, you know, 2v1, was just him walking into lane, probably burning the flash over the wall, as you can see it is on cooldown. They definitely have the upper hand right now. CLG do not even have to look at Baron. That bottom inhibitor turret being so low means that Curse are going to have to keep somebody at all times ready to defend that one. Because once you open one lane of your base to a team like CLG right now, then you've just given up so much pressure, especially that bottom lane, which is far away from Baron. So they've got a lot of vision down in that bottom half of the map, that's CLG. So if they did decide to pay that extra level of attention down there, they could do it a little bit more securely. Right now, Curse, they're trying to... I guess they're just trying to find the gear right now because they've only got that one dragon. They've only got a couple towers to their names. And they haven't really 
made a play on their terms. Well, CLG are really just taking away all the options from Curse right now, one at a time. They're clearing out the wards, so the option for picking off a member of CLG is very, very risky, being that they still have that stand United up to join whoever does get caught. And since they have the split pushing damage down bottom, they're taking away the option of Curse to waste any sort of time because that Link can easily take that turret out if left alone. So we'll see how this pans out. Five members, four members of Curse grouped up in this mid lane. They want to try and siege down this tower, but that short range of Draven, as we were talking about, might make it a little difficult. Here comes the Grand Skyfall, gets channeled. Pantheon drops in. Stand United's being channeled. They definitely want that, but he gets told to step aside by Draven. Nijak is on the retreat. Acceleration gate is up. That gives him the movement speed required to get away safely. Oh, it was a good disengage by Curse, but Saint gets caught. So there we go. Saint's the first of four. Whirling Death is out. Curse now on the aggressive. The Slicing Maelstrom is down. They pick up two in this engage so far. Carry on with the chase. Make that one instead. There's a flash forward. Stand aside to double lift. The axes are whirling. Barrier is up. Double Double of managers to survive. They've turned their focus. This is split right now. Draven falls into the tower thanks to that stun on Pantheon. Now Big Fat LP carry on chasing. Link is in the background. Nijak and Boy Boy. They split away from the pack. They left their carry and support. And now Link doing the best he can. He gets shut down, killed in that tribe. Three members of Curse are on the hunt though. All right, CLG, CLG are on the hunt, and Curse are the ones running. So they're going to try recall. This is a bit of a smart move. Big Fat LP has got 100 HP. He gets knocked back. That was a massive amount of damage. They weren't expecting that. Both members of Curse not anticipating that HP drop. And at the end of it, that was a staggered ace, effectively, against <laughs> Curse. They did pick up the five kills, but at the beginning of it, it was Cop going flashing forward on that Draven, which is a very, very risky thing to do, but it's something that they've wanted him to do, be more aggressive. And he did get the stand aside landing onto double lift, but wasn't able to finish him off. And so then by him getting stunned under turret, it just took away so much of the damage from Curse that the t tables completely flipped. That was the first team fight that we've seen Curse really re-engaging on, that they sort of said, we want to do this on our terms. Didn't work out for the best, and we've seen both Boy Boy and Nijaki splitting away from Cop and Edward. They decided to chase Link's Zed instead of stay grouped up. And we've seen earlier, St. Vicious, again, splitting away from his team. Maybe not everybody's on the exact same page in these team fights. But that is exactly what uh, Curse are pretty much looking for. They want the hard engage. It was fortunate for them that Big Fat LP and CLG decided to start that one off. They used both of their globals to actually get that fight. So Curse, uh, not disappointed with the way that one went. So they got a fair amount of damage onto this tower. It'll take one or two auto attacks with Draven and Jace there. That will drop down. Kill credit goes to St. Vicious on that Lee Sin. And that will secure them their third tower of the game. But take a look at this again. Nian and Link split pushing. They basically live in their top and bottom lanes respectively. And they don't have to change this strategy. There's been nothing from Curse to force them to stop split pushing both side lanes. So we'll see how, if it can work in their favor right now. Double lift with that immense range on Caitlyn has started off Baron Nasher with the assistance of Big Fat LP. He's going to do the best he can to Ooh, take this one on up. Baron. So they do have a little bit of vision, and here comes Curse. Shock Blast is up. Big Fat LP uses the Grand Skyfall to get to safety. Sonic now Baron's one. low, though, and Curse are just going to take it up. It does look like they want to get it. There goes the uh, death sentence in. They flash forward. Crescendo locks them up. Whirling Death goes forward, but Big Fat LP manages to secure Baron. They Chouster dies in the engagement, though. Double lift flashes past the Shock Blast on the left-hand side. Big Fat LP is probably going to get taken down. He is shut down by Draven. Ace in the hole is going to secure the killing blow onto Nijaki. Up in the river, Nien is taking on three. He's tanking three. He is so beefy. The damage is just not there. Another juke away from the CLG members. They did get Baron. Cop is not over. He carries on chasing, but Nien flashes to safety. That was just amazing play from CLG right there. It was a game of leapfrog where they all jumped over the back wall of Baron to start it up, then escaped using their ultimates there from Big Bad LP and got back in once again. Choster on the thresh play, hooking Baron and throwing a second Dark Paxis over his back to bring in Big Fat LP for yet another beautiful smite steal onto Baron. So well played by Big Fat LP, really showing that his timing and usage of that smite is on, you know, unstoppable right now, the splits. And for Choster, we have to finally shout out Choster for once, the thresh play, <laughs> that was 
very well executed. Able to bring his teammates over the wall and back twice. Basically just everybody all aboard that Thresh train and they came out of it with the Baron even though they lost out on kills. So well played to them. They, have, they hold their 5,000 gold advantage right now. Starting to see some very big items completed across the board. Warmogs for Shen, Warmogs for Zed. Over on the other side, we have double Randium's Omens with Saint Vicious and for Nijaki. And, you know, that's a very early Randium's for Jace, but again, he had to deal with a Pantheon, Caitlyn, and a Zed. Yeah, you could definitely say this CLG team is a little bit AD heavy. <laughs> so let's take a look at that Baron fight replay once again. Talk me through this one, Kobe. So this is the this is actually the second time they jump over the wall. Big Fat LP uses his Grand Skyfall to get out, and Chowster had flash. But now he hooks back in, brings in LP with the Lantern, and even though the Crescendo hits, you can still use that Summoner Smite, and Big Fat LP lands it beautifully. Now it's basically the split here. Big Fat LP running the gauntlet, able to juke out, and, and now let's get back to the live game. So really, really well played by CLG. Their level of communication and, you know, their decision making in the Baron Pit seemed really spot on. The split push pressure is back on. Nian does have Stand United available. Wits end completed as well as that Sunfire Cape. He's split pushing incredibly effectively at this stage in the game. And another note on that last fight there, the only way you can stop Big Fat LP from smiting is to use a suppression on him. Nothing like that is available for a curse. So, you know, there's no answer. Like, they can't stop him from taking that one away. As the bottom turret goes down and Yen gets a taunt. So Kopp is taunted up. He's doing a lot of damage in reply, but that's incredibly tanking Yen. And Yen is winning that engagement. He's simply not taking enough damage. He taunts up Kopp. The pressure is still on. Barrier gets forced out by Kopp. That was Ignite Burn from Yen as well. He actually wants to kill Kopp straight. And this is the popularity of that Wit's End. It steals magic resistance. And since Shen has so much magic damage from not only his kit, but also his Sunfire Cape, he puts out plenty of damage and he can actually one versus one an AD carry. So it's definitely working in their favor. You've seen how easily he was making that work. A stun goes down for Big Fat LP. St. Vicious engages in. The box is down. Chalster gets kicked backwards. Dragon Rage has been used. Stand United gets channeled onto Thresh as Crescendo locks him up. That chat, Stand United was interrupted. There is no Shen in this party. Link will be able to pick one up onto Boy Boy, but this is a fight that's going in Curse's favor so far until Link manages to pick one up in reply. Can he get Night Jackie? Living Shadow goes forward. Auto attack are down. Link with the triple kill. He's looking for four, looking for the quadra. Instead, he's going to stick on the minion wave, and Link carried hard that fight. The only reason Link was able to, able to carry that, though, is... Oh, no. I, just kidding. I want to shout out the cop uh, stand aside onto Nian right there. Uh, the only reason Link was able to carry that fight is because... Uh, that Shen ultimate was interrupted. Was interrupted there. Okay, now let's, let's actually look at that um, Shen Draven fight in the bottom lane once again. There it is. So he gets taunted up, but Cop is not scared away. He goes and hunts down the end after this. Take a look at that taunt him up. The amount so of ridiculously H low. So and then they're calling for it. He does get the kill. Nian not able to finish him off. So after the Stan United interrupt on Shen, he also gets the kill. Wanted to shout out Cop there, but I got a little mixed up with Link. <laughs> you get the idea. I, we get the idea, Kobe. We get the idea. Curse right now, with these glimpses of hope, they're only 7,000 gold behind right now. They're at least keeping themselves in at this moment in time. They have not lost an inhibitor, but they do have an inhibitor exposed. And against the split-pushing power of Shen and Zed, it's definitely something that they're going to need to react to if or when CLG decide to play aggressive. And like I said before, when the inhibitor turret is down, you've lost such a large amount of control of objectives. Here goes the all in on Void Boy. So they've jumped on him. The death mark is down. Void Boy's going to be able to zone his hourglass up. The damage is not going to hold him in place. Crescendo locks down both Big Fat LP and Chowster. Now they're flashing. They're trying to get to safety. First kill of the fight goes to Cop. Draven carries on chasing as Void Boy moves forward. Link uses that living shadow to go backwards and CLG split. Nijack, he left alone to face off against Double Lift and Chowster. They get one in this engagement, but CLG successfully peel away. Great job there by Link with the distraction. He was able to confuse Curse, and they split in the team fight, not able to pick up any more kills than they already had from that ill-fated ambush in the jungle. 
That's why you don't death mark onto someone who has Zhonya's because basically half of the Zed damage there was avoided. So well played by Voiboy. Make sure you got the timing up as well. He survived that engagement after going very, very low and taking all of that upfront burst. And a one for zero kill that's in favor of Cop. He is six, two, and two on that Draven with the makings of Arandian home, Arandian's home and himself potentially. Because the enemy team is so much AD, it's only really Nyen that's putting out a lot of magic damage, then they can afford to have everyone build extra armor here on the curse team. It's something that we've seen over in some of the European teams when they stack these AD heavy compositions. I'm thinking back to Ninjas in Pajamas in week two where they played a very similar comp. Their opponent's team just stacked all this armor, built a thorn mail after 35 minutes, and they couldn't be killed. There was nothing that they could do to get through it. The thing about it is that all the members on CLG know that this is a weakness in their comp, and they're building Last Whispers. So they are definitely getting through a large chunk of that armor, and it's not quite as effective. So they still have plenty of damage potential. So Nian is going to taunt up Cop, stand aside, and that one misses. Doesn't hold Nian in place. He's going to carry on chasing, takes a little couple of auto attacks, but decides no vision, not willing to go more aggressive into the jungle. He remembers what happened to him last time he went up against Cop. He got beat back down, and he does have the Stand United, so if they do break out a fight up by Baron, it will still be a 5 versus 5 here. Now is the time that Curse have to act, though, because the inhibitor is exposed. So we do see Shen. He's moving down to this bottom lane. He's doing the best he can to siege it up. Nijaki with an immediate recall. It's going to get interrupted. He eats the bullet, in fact. But Nien is backing away, so he's not going to keep the pressure up on that actual inhibitor. And Curse successfully thwart the second Baron attempt. So what Nien has to do is build up his minion wave down there to help him get more damage on the inhibitor. And then, again, have the rest of CLG continue to wait around Baron and draw Curse over to that area. So you can see Nien went all the way back to his minion wave, and now he's trying to build it up there and slowly push as Bibba LB gets engaged on. Stand United gets channeled. Four members of Curse are there. They're going to jump in. Shen does arrive. It's not interrupted this time. Link is down towards the bottom. He gets locked up by Crescendo. He's the first one to fall. They turn their focus to Nien Tansa, but he's going to take so much killing before he goes down. The box is now dropped by Chelsea, trying to control the fight as Nien flashes away to safety. Curse still grouped together. That's four members. They drop Chelsea. So this is their third kill of the fight. This is a great fight for Curse. They've lost nobody and the pressure is still on. The Lightning Rush is not available, but Slicing Maelstrom and Flash is. If they want to carry on, Boy Boy has the tools available. Well, they definitely want to change over focus to this Baron area and see if Saint can land a Smite combo with a Sonic Wave. So we'll see if this works out. Baron is up. Big Fat LP is down, Grand Skyfall is available, but this Baron will be gone by the time he respawns. And that was a fantastic trade for Curse. All of a sudden, they now get power and presence thanks to this Baron buff. This is the hard engage that I was talking about Curse needing to do. They have to make a play on CLG. They can't wait around for the split push to take effect. And they did an amazing job right there, starting it up against Big Fat LP very early and getting out so much damage before Nien joined the fight that they were able to win it even with the Stand United coming in. What we did see from CLG is the inability to stay grouped in that entire fight. Curse is just such a, a, a death ball rolling together. Right now, Void Boy, he didn't even use his ultimate. He still has it available. Void Staff, Rolex Crystal Scepter, as well as that Zonya's Outlast. He's all about the damages. And he has a lot of extra CC here, too, with the Rylai's Crystal Scepter slowing down enemies. After the mini stun, they're still going to be slowed, and it's going to be harder for them to try and get out of that slicing maelstrom. So he will be causing a lot of havoc on the back line of CLG. And for the first time in a very long time, Curse are going to be able to challenge for that dragon. They've, they've really been confined to their half of the map, but thanks to some of this confidence they've been getting over the course of the last fights, they managed to secure their third dragon of the total game. You can see the pings coming out from CLG on both side lanes once again. They want to continue split pushing because now that Curse have the Baron buff, it will be very, very hard for them to actually win a 5 vs 5 fight, and they would much rather trade inhibitor for inhibitor. So right now, Curse is stacked up as the numbers. They've got the, the mid in, inner turret down. Now they're on the inhibitor turret. Shen and Zed are not reacting. First inhibitor of the game is going to go to Curse, and it doesn't look like they're going to let up. Curse would just like to go on these Nexus turrets, and they're actually even going to tank them up. Now is the time that they have to recall. Link is going to try and get that inhibitor before it goes back, but it might be too late. Link is doing the best he can. He's deciding to back away. Nexus turret number two is down. Crescendo locks up Big Fat LB and Double Lift. Can they do it? Curse carry on with the pressure. They're focusing down Nien. He survives for so the long. Boy Boy's down. The Nexus is done. Curse have done it. They backdoor the game. Oh, Jackie was focusing the Nexus. And
that entire time. Great job by them, just bump rushing right down the middle. Like I said, Link wanted that inhibitor so bad that it actually cost them their Nexus turrets. And you have to recall at that point, you can't trade an inhibitor for a Nexus because the Nexus means you lose the game. I cannot get over how that game went. CLG were in complete control for the majority of that matchup. And after one successful team fight, Kirsch just say, let's go, and they finish it. That is exactly what they had to do, too. They had no other options. You have to hard engage. You have to catch someone out and burst them down before the Shen comes in from the delay of a Stan United. And they did exactly that, then rolled it into Baron and a game-winning push down mid. The combo with Jace, with Lee Sin, with Draven and Cannon, champions that can do lots of damage to towers, they just shredded those, those buildings and, and completed, picked up a win. Yeah. Yeah, Link definitely underestimated that tower damage from Curse at the end there. He thought that they would be more hesitant to go all in, but they just tanked both Nexus turrets and dove right over. So we do have a replay. Let's actually go back to that 3-4-0 team fight in the mid lane and show you the real change in power. Yeah, so talk this, is this. All, this is all the damage focused on a single target, which is exactly what you want to do. Curse got to put everything into Big Fat LB, which basically took him out of the fight. So it was still a four versus four, even by the time that Shen had arrived. And then Void was going to come down from the top. So at this point, there's no hope for CLG. And they have been stuck in here. So they just get one more kill on the Chouster and immediately turn over towards Baron to compound that win that they just got with the extra buff. So really, really great play coming out of Curse. That puts them at five wins and nine losses. And it bounces CLG to seven and seven now tied with Team Solo Mid. They both have matches later in the day, though. All right, we're going to take a short break. But when we return, we'll be joined by Curse's St. Vicious to talk about their comeback win. Then Dignitas and Team Coast take to the Rift for our second battle of the day. Week five of the NA LCS Summer Split will return right after this. We'll mm -hmm.